You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, never here from Drake Wing Gaming. And some of you mounts, what are the gaming dragon today? I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of A Masquerade in the Woods, Ink's Path. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can now support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. Before lifting her paw, pointing at her overall ears. Can hear it across half the forest. Not sure we would have found you otherwise. I look down at my aching shoulder, just as River loops the stark white bandage around the back of my neck. She lifts my arm to my chest with determination, fashioning a makeshift sling. All the while, involuntary groans of pain escape my muzzle. Why, uh, why'd you... I trail off. She glances up at me for a second before returning her eyes to her work. I mean, I didn't think you did this sort of stuff. Especially not for me. Don't get used to it. She sighs. Lou cares about you. They both do. They, they wouldn't want to see you dead. I'm not sure I believe that. Pretty sure a lot of things would be better if I was. Thank you. She shakes her head, waving it off as her digits fiddle with the roll of, her, of the roll of gauze. You care about him a lot, don't you? Lou, I mean. She stops, her expression changing as she blankly looks down at my arm. We've known each other since we were kids. He's like a younger brother to me. Don't get me wrong, Lou's a fucking idiot. Obsessed with those stupid comic books. No wonder he thinks himself a real-life sly paw. Never, never should have shown them to him. She, she pauses, taking a deep breath. But after all the bullshit he's been through? She shakes her head, closing her eyes as if to shake off unwanted thoughts. Her paws pick up where she left off, tugging at the knot to make sure my arm stays in place. We better get back to home base. She stands up, swinging the backpack over her shoulder and offering her paw. I reach up with my good arm, being pulled up to my feet. River starts walking through the swampy forest floor, and as I follow her, another question enters my mind. Did you see that tall white man? Uh, the tall white man? Do you know who he is? The mutt? You tell me. No, the one I ran after. The unicorn. She stops, slowly turning with a strange expression. Hmm. Other people have seen him, too. What is he, some kind of god of death or something? Who I think he probably is. The only way you can... The only way you can get to him is by... The only way you can, I guess, summon him is by making offerings or something? It's just... What I think this group is doing, they're communicating with this dark god or whatever, and they're doing these awful, horrible things to people in order to communicate with him. I'm sorry. Hmm? I didn't mean to scare them. Oh, don't you worry about it. You did give your parents quite a fright back there, but no one blames you. Playing in the water alone can be quite dangerous. She's not my real mom. Is that so? Yeah. Mommy ran away, and Daddy says she's scared. Scared of what, exactly? I don't know. Daddy gets upset when I ask. Perhaps Mom and Dad don't know either. No, I don't think so. Adults always know. I'm sure they wish that were the case. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this around your arm, okay, Cody? Okay. Your hair looks funny. Hmm? Your hair, it looks weird. Yeah? Yeah, it's like a pony's tail. It's like a nail. Water time. Hmm. All right. Have you ever ridden a horse before, Cody? No, ponies are for girls. Are they now? Yeah. I find horses can be quite majestic creatures. I guess. Can I help you? Can I call you Colt, then? You can call me whatever you'd like, Cody. You're gonna feel some pressure around your arm now, okay? Okay. Okay, good. That's good. Looks like our time together is almost up. Are we going to the hospital? Yes, we are. We're almost there. Do we have to go? I don't like it there. It smells weird. And the doctor's scary. It's okay. I'm here. And perhaps if you're a good boy, the doctor will give you a nice lollipop after. Do you like lollipops, Cody? 
Yeah, raspberry. Well, I'm sure they have those. Colt? Yes, Cody? Will you stay with me? Until the end. This is a weird thing to say. Shepard's head snaps sharply as her paw strikes across his muzzle. The beast's crimson eyes slowly open as he turns his head back, only answering with a low grunt. Despite the considerable force behind River's blow, the hyena stands relatively unmoved, as if made of stone. What the fuck were you thinking? Attention and slight awkwardness is palpable as they stare each other down, Shepard's muzzle in height with the rabbit's pointed ears. I stiffly lean up against the doorframe, still shivering from the improvised swim earlier. You find a panicking boy in the bathroom, and your response is not only to hold him against the wall, but to scream at him? River didn't take it well when I told her on her hike back. He was fine. He was slitting his wrist. She throws her arms out to either side. What the fuck's your problem? Shepard, meanwhile, stands unfazed, expression cold. When it becomes clear he doesn't intend to answer, she turns away, only one paw on her hip, the other pinching the bridge of her nose. Fucking Unbelievable. Are you done? She turns back to him. Am I? No, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck you. What the fuck happened to you? Her expression melts from anger to one of despair. Huh? What, what happened to the guy who gave me a place to sleep when I couldn't come home? The guy who gave me a ride to school because my fucking dad was shit-faced and passed out in the bathtub, huh? Shepard's gaze draws away from Rivers, and in response she takes a step forward. You changed. Ludwig made you cruel. Don't you dare. You're fucking useless. His growling voice echoes off the cold concrete around us. River shakes her head, looking up at the growling beast with somber eyes, before turning and pushing past me. Shepard's breaths are heavy, chest rising and falling as he turns to me. Second now, water time. Mm. I've got Skittles flavor powder for this water that I'm drinking. It's like strawberry flavored. It's pretty good. Pretty flavorful. I immediately let my eyes fall to the concrete floor. Shepard strokes his muzzle, stepping over to one of the pillars lining the room. Placing his forearm up against it, he leans forward, closing his eyes. I turn around, stepping outside. The light of the moon seeps through the thin veil of clouds above, and the smell of tobacco drifts through the air. But it's not the cheap, acrid stench of smoke. It's the warm, aromatic, aromatic almost chocolate aroma. Like the smell of a cigar, but artificial. Just off the gravel path sits the rabbit. I walk up and awkwardly sit down next to her. She lifts a paw to wipe at her eyes, taking a long drag from the small box in her other. I didn't know you smoked. Oh, fuck off. She sighs. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound... No, I know. We sit there for a moment, both observing the amber liquid inside the glass chamber. It's the first time we've really we've really been alone since meeting at Lucas's place, not counting the forest earlier. It's a little awkward, and the previous argument is inside isn't helping. You think Lucas and Mason are okay? She nods, pulling her phone out. Mason texted me a few minutes ago, said they're on their way back. I let out a sigh of relief, knowing they're safe. After Lucas tackles that pale dog, tackled that pale dog, I wasn't sure he'd survive. Not with how he just br brushed off that gunshot. What was he like before he changed? She lets out a weak chuckle. You know he used to play the guitar? I look up at her, shaking my head. I don't really know anything about him. Or any of them think about it. Her eyes look off into the distance between the trees. He used to be pretty good at it, too. He played for me out here, outside of town. Don't think I've seen him, in t don't think I've seen him touch it in years now. 
Taught her to dance on that cold-ass floor inside. Dance? She nods, the edge of her lip curling to a small smile. Then, then there was the time you read me Plato for a week straight, just for a history assignment. I can't help but smile a little, too. Shepard reads philosophy? It was practically the only thing he read for a year straight. Huh. The sweetest guy I knew. You look... I stopped myself. You were pretty close. Her gaze stays distant beyond the tree line, lifting her fist to take another drag. The smoke slowly streams out her nostrils towards the silver sky. You're not going to answer. You don't have to. I know what it's like, loving someone. So, she and, uh... Yeah, she and, uh... She and, maybe she and Shepard were a couple, maybe? Hmm. That's what it seems to imply. No, please! Cody, I can't anymore! Please don't leave me! I, I love you! I can't do this anymore, Cody! Please, 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 please! I'll, I'll do anything! Please! Take a nail. Order time. Cody... I'm sorry, please. I I'm so sorry. Just please don't leave me. Then get a fucking grip of yourself, man. Fuck, you're acting like a child. And then learning to and then learning to hate them. Cody! What? I look up to meet her eyes, a suspicious expression across her muzzle. You zoned out. Sorry. I scratch my neck. Uh bad memories? She watches me for a second before turning back to the forest, exhaling through her nose. Yeah, you'll fit right in. What do you mean? She looks down at the display on her, on her vape, rapidly pressing the big button until the light turns off. Half the reason we're all here. Bad memories. Most sorry group of misfits you'll ever come across. She mutters, slipping the device into her pocket. <sighs> fit right in. I can't go back, can I? River lets out a big sigh, combing her hair back with a paw. Never say never, but honestly, I reckon you're in too deep at this point. They know you. They know that you know. And they won't stop looking. You're a liability to them, just like we all are. I can't go back. I can't leave. I'll never get to see you again, Miles, will I? Look, you... She turns to face me more, straight on. You made your choice, right? You you wanted to help. I tried to warn you, but that shit don't matter now. You're involved. Now deal with it. I know you got the balls for it. Shit, I've seen them firsthand. What? That Prince dude is involved in all this, and you just stared him down, alone. That takes some fucking courage. He spoke as if he knew me. Never thought I'd have enemies. I don't think too much about it. A man without enemies is a man without honor. I let out a weak chuckle. Who's that a quote by? She shrugs, the side of her muzzle tugging up into a small smile. Fuck if I know. Heard it in a rap song. One second now. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Ooh, excuse me. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye